In this video, I'm going to show you how to voice a minor chord, right from a triad up to a thirteenth. And I'm going to show you some examples from Sammy Nestico, Bob Brookmeyer, Thad Jones, and Gil Evans. Let's make a start. Here we've got a C minor, got a root note, a flat third, and a fifth. If I was voicing this for horns, I'd probably have a trumpet on the top, a sax in the middle, and a trombone on the bottom. Here's what it sounds like. Inversions sound good as well. As well as this one. And here's a more experimental voicing from one of my own pieces. For this one I have a flute on top, with the alto sax in the middle, and a trumpet on the bottom. Okay, let's move on to a minor 7. You need a root, a flat in 3rd, an optional 5th, and a flat in 7th. Minor 7th sound really good when they're voiced in 3rds. For this one, we've got a trumpet, two saxes, and a trombone. And here's another example with trumpet, sax, trombone, and sax. Inverting a minor 7th is fine as well. Having the interval of a second between the 7th and the root is completely fine. That one sounds good, doesn't it? It's partly because of the nice intervals created by like instruments. The trumpets on the G and the trombones on the B flat. That's a nice rich interval of a major sixth. And the two sixes are a minor third apart, which is another nice interval. It makes for a nice sounding chord. If you've only got three horns and you want to have a minor seven, you could leave out the fifth or you could leave the root to the bass player. There's nothing wrong with that. Here's an A minor 7 chord, voiced by Sammy Nestico in his marvellous chart, Straight Ahead. Note how the root is a major second away from the minor 7th, and the trombones are down an octave from the trumpets. The saxes are spread nicely throughout their range. This chord was featured on my Big Band Chords Compared video, check it out if you haven't seen it. Let's move on to minor 9th now. Like minor 7th, minor 9th sound good stacked in thirds. This one is two trumpets at the top, two saxes, and then a trombone. Placing the 7th down lower adds a lot of stability. This is a typical voicing. Placing a 9th next to the minor 3rd is one of life's great joys. The minor 2nd creates a nice crunch that is smoothed off by the 5th above. Doesn't it sound good? Without the fifth or any other note above, it can sound a little jarring. Here's an example of C minor 9 from Thad Jones's Backbone chart. The saxes have the nice minor second between the ninth and the minor third, and the trumpets actually outline a G minor triad above. If you only have four horns, it's common to leave the bass note to the bass player. This way you still get the minor second crunch and you outline the harmony. Let's move on to minor sixes. The minor six adds some poignancy to the minor chord and it works well as a chord one in a minor key. This example is voiced as trumpet, trumpet, trombone, trombone. The chord can get a little more spicy with the 6th on top. If you wanted to include a minor 7th in a minor 6th chord, it can get a bit crowded. It is possible, it just has a bit of an interesting sound. If you do use the 7th, keep it below the 6th so you don't get a crunchy minor 9th interval. However, a 9th and a 6th work really well together. We call them C minor 6 nines. This one is voiced as trumpet, trumpet, sax, sax, trombone. Here's what it sounds like with trumpet, sax, trumpet, sax, trombone. And here's what it sounds like with a baritone sax on the bottom. They're all slightly different. Minor 6 nines make a great one chord in the minor key. Here's a really nice, low, and rich voicing from Gil Evans's Lover Man. Adding a major 7th adds an interesting spice to a minor chord. It functions well as a 1 chord in a minor key. This voicing is trumpet, 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 and trombone. 
you can play with the dissonance depending on where you put the seventh. There's a nice standard voicing. Or for something a little more dissonant, this voicing is all trumpets. There's a certain darkness when the flat fifth is introduced. This is a nice mixed voicing of trumpet, sax, trombone, baritone sax. A minor seven flat five works well in inversion as well. The most common added note to a half diminished or a minor seven flat five chord is the 11th. It has quite a neutral sound. You only have to watch out for where you place the 11th if you're going to put it next to the flat five or not. Here it is with saxes. And here it is with trumpets and trombones. For a minor 11th chord, you need the root, flat 3rd, optional 5th, flat 7th, 9th and 11th. Like the others, it works well stacked in thirds. This is voiced with all trumpets and a trombone. The interesting thing about the 11th, that it is one of the extensions that can be placed below the 7th and 3rd. Have a listen to it. Here we have the root, 11th, minor 7th, 9th, minor 3rd, and 5th. Here's a tasty minor 11th chord from Bob Brookmeyer's Skylark. When you see a minor 13th written, it suggests that you have all the extensions present, including the minor 7th, 9th, 11th, and 13th. This chord isn't used as much. It tends to sound quite thick and neutral. It implies the Dorian mode. Here's a voicing with trumpets and trombones. Because you have so many notes, you can build chords on all sorts of intervals. Here is one built on fourths, or a quartal voicing. It's very thick. And that concludes the video. I hope you got something out of it. Leave me a comment if you've got any questions.